What's happening dogs? Mr. Allen here with some solving of systems of equations using elimination method. We got elimination method, substitution method, and graphing. You can use them to solve any system. My preferred method is elimination method. We're going to go through four different examples, increasing in difficulty with each one. So let's get it started. First one here, boom, it's set up perfectly for elimination method because when I add these two equations together, my x's cancel, eliminate, hence the name. I get 2y equals, and here I'm going to have 5, negative 9, that's negative 4. We're going to divide by 2 on both sides, and we get y equals negative 2. But we are not done, all right? The answer to a system of equations is the point at which these two lines, because I can graph each one of these lines, it might help to put it in like slope-intercept form, but I can graph them no less. It is where they intersect on that graph. So my answer here is always an ordered pair. So let's plug that negative 2 back into either one of these and get our x. I'll use the uh, bottom one here. So I'm going to have x plus, and then negative 2 is going in for y, equals negative 9. Anytime I substitute in a value for a particular variable, I always like to throw parentheses around it. It shows that substitution that's occurring. And if there's any exponent, coefficient, whatever, um, I can deal with that by multiplying with, by the negative 2 or whatever we need to do. All right, enough of that here. I've got x minus 2, right? That's all we have for this one here. So I'm going to add 2 on both sides, and I get x equals, this is going to be what? Negative 7. So my answer here is negative 2, sorry, negative 7, comma, negative 2. Boom. Beautiful. All right? It is x, comma, y for our ordered pair. Every answer for a system of equations, of linear equations here, two variables, is going to be an ordered pair, x comma y, in this case, negative seven comma negative two. Cool, awesome, lovely, keep on moving. All right, this one here, it's not set up for elimination yet, but we can. All right, I can choose to multiply either one of these two by a negative one, right? In other words, really I could just make everything negative, but I'm gonna multiply this top one here by a negative one. So I would have negative five x, minus y equals zero. And then my other equation is going to stay the same. I'll have 5x plus 2y equals 30. Cool? You could have just kind of worked with these two right here or rewrite them. The proper thing to do is to rewrite them. If you're cramped for space, like I'm kind of cramped for space, it may have helped to just, you know, shortcut it. But shortcuts in math often lead to issues. So try to avoid those. All right. Those cancel. I'm left with, ooh, this is lovely. Negative y plus 2y is 1y, which equals 30. Awesome. I didn't even have to do any further algebra like we did in the other one. But now I do need to solve for x. I can pick either one of these two and solve. I'll go with the top one. That one seems the easiest to me. Again, I always go for the one that seems the easiest to me. Least amount of negatives, least amount of numbers to multiply by, that kind of stuff. So I'm going to have 5x plus, we're plugging in 30 for y. Again, parentheses aren't necessary here, but I do do that when I am substituting, just to show the substitution for a variable. And I got, uh, let's see here, 5x uh, is going to equal, let's subtract the 30. Let's just do that. Minus 30. 5x equals negative 30. Divide by 5 on both sides, and I get x equals negative 6. So my ordered pair here is negative 6, comma, what was my y? 30. Dope. All right. So we first multiply by negative 1 through my top equation, really both sides of the equation. Technically, this is inappropriate mathematical stuff, but I learned math on the streets, dude. So sometimes I do things like that, right? Technically, you need to multiply each side by negative 1, but settle down, people. It's easy to understand that, right? Then I have my elimination happening. Solve for y, yay. Plug back in, get x, all right? Whenever you're learning substitution method, the second half here, this is substitution. So like the second half of any system is the same thing. Once I solve for one variable, I got to substitute it in to solve for the other. Every system solved algebraically, substitution or elimination, the second half right here is going to be the same. Okay? Next one. I'm going to go blue with this one. Oh boy. This is unfortunate, right? We don't have things in the right order. Nothing's going to cancel here. So I'm going to rewrite this where we have x plus 4y equals 5, and this will be negative 3x plus 8y equals 5. Cool? I've rearranged it, x, y, number, x, y, number, all right? That's so how I set up every single system if I'm going to go elimination method. Okay, so 
unfortunate at the start, but, but I think we can just go ahead and multiply this top one here by a positive three, or we can multiply it by a negative two if we want to cancel the y's. It's really your choice there. I'm going to go with multiplying by a three, which will cancel out my x's, right? Seems like it'll work. So I'm going to have, let's see here, 3x plus 12y equals 15. And I'm going to do what I was talking about before to save a little bit of space here. This is my top equation. So let's say I'm done with that now. We're working with these two, right? My bottom equation didn't change. I just adjusted the top one, rewrote it, saved myself a little space there, right? It's going to be helpful. These might get a little long here sometimes, okay? X's cancel. We got 8y plus 12y. That is 20y equals 5 plus 15. That is 20. Oh, my goodness. Divide by 20. We get y equals 1. That's lovely. Now I'm going to plug back in. Either one of these two equations is fine. Your call. I'm going to go with the top one because it just has an x by itself, meaning the algebra is going to be pretty, pretty simple there. So I've got four parentheses. Here's where I love the parentheses for my substitution, right? I've got a coefficient. I know I'm going to be multiplying that one. That's kind of what I was talking about here and here. The parentheses didn't really do much in these two, but here it is significant, which is why I just consistently go with my parentheses, all right? So we got x plus 4 equals 5. Subtract 4 on both sides. We get x equals 1. Ooh, that's fun. 1 comma 1. x is 1. y is 1. Ordered pair. The point of intersection of these two linear equations when graphed is my solution. Okay? Solution to a system of equation is an ordered pair because it's a point on a graph. I got one, two lines, boom. That's a solution right there. I'm going to put arrows on my lines. All right. Last one. Last one here. Another mess, right? Another mess, but that's okay. We're going to rearrange it. X, Y, number. X, Y, number. Continue on with our wonderful life here. So I'm going to have 8X minus 3Y equals 7. Just flippy floppy. We're going to flip the other one. We're going to put the 10X, the positive 4Y equals 1. Okay? So I flipped things around. I just completely flipped each equation, and then I rearranged the bottom one there, had to switch the 10x and the 4y, all right? So there we go. Now, I gotta figure out, dude, what am I multiplying each one of these by? Because I gotta multiply both of them in this situation. These numbers are a little large. I mean, we can get to 40 with these two to get them to cancel, but I think I'm gonna go with the y's for this one because 12, 12 is one that we can work with, right? So I'm gonna multiply this one by four and I'm going to multiply this one by 3. Another advantage that I see to working with the y's here is one is already negative. The other one is positive. So they're automatically just going to cancel out in that situation, right? So now I'm going to have, and I'm going to put myself some nice little brackets because this is my new system. 4 times 8 is 32x. There we got negative 12y equals 28. Oh, man. Jenny's saying what's up to some people, right? Some passers-by right now. I don't know if you can hear your barking in the microphone. Maybe. She's saying, what's up? Hey, man. Good to see you on a walk. All right. Next one. 3 times 10 is 30x. 3 times 4 is 12y. And 3 times 1 is 3. Lovely. Getting close to the edge of my board here. Hopefully, we can see everything. We can. I got a little thing in my watch. All right. Tech flux. Now, we can cancel those out. I'm going to have, what is that, 62x. All right. Cool. This is unfortunate. Equals... 31, so I'm going to get myself ooh, a fraction. That, that's, a, that's a little bummer here, but we got one half. It's a doable fraction, right? Uh, these are both divisible by 31. It would reduce down to one half. So we're going to have to you know, muster up some courage here okay, to deal with this, guys. We're dealing with a fraction on this one. It's a very scary, very scary situation, but we can handle it. All right, so I got my X. Now I got to get my Y. I can use either one of these here. Uh, the second equation is all positives. Let's do that one. So I'm going to switch markers here because I think we're getting a little bit lost in the sauce. So we got 1 equals, we have 4y plus, and then we have 10 times 1 half. So it actually isn't too bad because 10 times 1 half is just 5, right? So you get 1 equals 4y plus 5. I'm going to subtract 5. We get, ooh, wonderful, negative 4 equals 4y divided by 4. 
we get y equals negative 1. And lastly, but not leastly, we got our ordered pair, which hopefully we'll be able to see here. We've got 1 half for x, and we got negative 1 for y. Sorry, we got a little scrunch there at the end. So much math trying to be fit on this board here. Let's see if we got it. I think we got it. I think we got it. We nailed it. All right, there we go, guys. Four examples of systems of equations by elimination. Simple, ready to rock and roll. Had to multiply by a negative. Had to rearrange and multiply one of the equations. Both equations here. That's really the most difficult situation. We need to multiply both of them. We're dealing with fractions, a whole lot of stuff. But hey, man, if you can handle these four, you're rocking and rolling. My preferred method is elimination method. Not a huge fan of substitution unless it's necessary. This is my go-to. So if you have the choice, I'd go with this one. That's about it. Stay dope, dogs.